Ever since I was a young dentist, I had a dream of where one day I could have my own studio involved around dentistry. And that's before digital dentistry, but wow, look at what we are doing with digital dentistry now, which is created a inquisitive nature. And even in my mid sixties, I am having as much fun in dentistry as I've ever had, particularly with the clinical side. And that's what drives my educational side. So up here at my homestead, I have this digital studio. It has one chair, a delivery system, and it will house the latest in digital technology. And I'm really grateful to my alignments with companies that are helping me do this. Now, just let's make a note about companies. I'm not owned by anybody. I've done lectures for a lot of different companies through the years. You know, Dent Supply Sharona used to be Sharona. I've Eclair, I've spoken on Vita products. I've spoken about Burrs, which is my singer. I have spoken about printers, Sprint Ray, uh, even Asiga. So even though I talk about products and I do get sponsorship and honorariums when I speak from these various companies, I've always been my own person and I'm not owned by a company. In other words, when I talk about a product, I'm gonna talk about it because I use it, not because I'm looking to make money from a company on it. But having said that, I'm really grateful for those companies that see value in the way we message here online at the Clem Institute and CAD Start. I have a lot to be grateful for this last day of the year. Most importantly, I'm really grateful for my wife and what we've done over the last few years. We now live up here in Idaho on a homestead. We have an organic farm that we're developing. And on that farm, I have my digital studio so I can still do what I love to do and that's create video content and develop techniques, pass it on to the universe of dentistry and particularly with what I have here at my homestead, it makes it really easy for me just to set a camera up. I've designed this studio with lighting and also windows, so I don't have to use a lot of support lighting, even though I have that for my podcast. I can pretty much put the camera on and shoot away. So I'm really grateful for that. My wife was instrumental in overseeing this project. It is a country style studio where I go to my peace of mind. I just have this sense of creativity when I'm up here in nature. Our closest neighbor is a mile away, so we have a lot of privacy here. Whether it's in the summer or in the winter, it's accessible and I really enjoy doing that. So I do practice down in Santa Rosa, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesdays, and then I'm up here where I do most of my digital content, do my podcast, and there's a lot more coming this next year on the podcast. We talk dentistry, we did get that debuted this year and I'm looking forward to that. I have a really nice setup for that here. Fortunately with Starlink, I can broadcast way out in the country and we have really good upload speed. So I'm really grateful for that and the support I've had. In CAD CAM dentistry, I'm still primarily chair side and for that I'm using Prime Scan and Prime L. I do have an M6L, but the Prime Mill has really come to its own now. I really like the extra fine mill for ceramics. In fact, that's all I use when I'm using ceramics and the margin quality and the fit are just phenomenal. In addition to that, we have our good zirconia mill with the prime mill. And I feel like that is working extremely well. In fact, at the end of this video, I'll go over my primary choice for zirconia today. I feel like we have it all in one block, even though we have a lot of good zirconia support in this industry. I feel like if I can use less materials so I know how they perform and they're more predictable, I think we're gonna go a long ways with that. So stay till the end of the video and I go through my workflow, particularly on zirconia chair side with the prime scan and the prime mill. And uh, even though I'm a ceramic guy, I do use a lot of zirconia for my elderly clients and particularly on second molars where I just don't have that room. But my elderly clients who get subgingival decay, I do like zirconia in the way I manage that. So I'm really grateful that we have this. In fact, I was just thinking the other day what I used to do before we had zirconia chair side and how we would make other options work. But those would sometimes be the things that I'd think about after the day or as I'm going to sleep at night with just a little bit of tension in my heart. My whole goal about doing dentistry chair side is not to have tension in my heart about the clinical outcome. Even though most of what we do today is very predictable, there is that five to 7%, at least in my clinical theater, where I'm pulling everything I can to make it work to buy time with teeth. And you know what I'm talking about. We all have to go through that as clinicians. But one thing I'm grateful for this year is 
how matured the chair side CAD CAM has become, particularly with the Prime Scan. And now I can upload my Prime Scan files to the DS Core and easily convert that into ExoCAD, which I'm very excited about. In fact, this year I'm going to be introducing ExoCAD here online and in my classes, particularly with diagnostics and printing and larger cases like here i have my pm7 up here at my homestead uh, where i'll be developing my skill sets with other milling options for those larger cases where i'm not doing them all in one day so this is my workflow for larger cases which i do a lot of in my practice is that you have diagnostics you have removable appliances you get the patient comfortable you work them into transitional occlusion and bonded appliances which will be done with printing one reason why I've added ExoCAD to my digital workflow, in addition to what I do with Sarah, is because I have more options in the way I finish cases. My whole goal with digital dentistry is that it should be more precise, right? So the workflow needs to always support that, even though I really like the same day restoration, when I'm in my clinical theater and Prime Scan and the Prime Mill is still my go-to for that. However, a lot of my cases go way beyond same day dentistry. I'm looking to put everything into a digital workflow, which will include diagnostics, printing for diagnostics, the shell temporaries, the shell smile mock-ups, the transitional teeth and occlusion before we get to the final occlusion. My philosophy on full mouth rehab, whether I'm changing the vertical or not, is to make it back into general dentistry. So I always have occlusal references and that's the beauty of digital dentistry is that we can manage our occlusion so well, better than anything I've ever seen in my 40 years of practicing. I am a shim stock guy. In fact, I use trofoil for that. That's our articulating paper that's eight microns thick and it works extremely well. So that's one reason why I'm so excited about this year because in my mid 60s, I'm not ready to walk away from dentistry. I'm having too much fun. And that brings me to another point. I'm really grateful for this. If you've seen me at conventions in the last few years, you'll see me kind of hobbling a little bit. I've had a bad hip and a bad back. And this year I upgraded my hip. I had a hard time finding time for that because when you're running a practice in a teaching business, uh, it, it's difficult to put that aside and you know I'm really driven. But I got to a crisis position, so I was able to move into surgery and there's my new hardware. Yes, I'm feeling so good now. So now I can walk normally. I'm still getting my gait back, but I am walking without pain. And what's amazing is when you're in pain and it happens slowly over a period of time, it just started to eat at me. And I'm a survivalist. I have a strong mental framework, but you know, when your body's not functioning right and you have chronic inflammation, it kind of brings it down and then you have to work out of that. What's really been revealing to me during this period of time of recovery, and I'm about 10 weeks out on that now, is you know, I don't have that chronic inflammation. My back doesn't hurt anymore. I'm getting my energy back to where I was in my mid 30s. I've always had a lot of energy. So I feel very hopeful for what I'm gonna be doing here in the future, regardless of my age. I still have that drive. My eyes are good. My hand coordination is really good. So I hope to be providing video content because it is my passion. I love making these videos. What really drives me at this stage in life is purpose. And that is just not about me. It's what can we do to raise the bar in our profession. When I'm not doing this one day, I know that that legacy will be left on, not because I need it. What really drives me is staying in my passion when that passion is provided for others, whether it be my patients or my educational platform, and I can leave this profession a better profession. Dentistry has been such a blessing to me. It provided avenues of joy and experiences that I would never have had any other way. So if I can pass this on to my colleagues and inspire others as I have been inspired, then I have done my job in dentistry. Okay, before we conclude this video, let's talk about materials. This year has been a growing experience with materials. I appreciate all the companies that provide materials for our clinical theater. Now with CAD CAM here, with my 5 million axes, there's a lot more I'll be using, but CEREC, as far as chair side goes with Prime Scan and Prime Mill, there's basically two materials I use now. Emax has always been my go-to material for ceramics and has been for over a decade. I still use Impress, I still use Vita products. One reason why I like Emax so much is because I'm going more conservative with my dentistry, particularly with prep style, so I want that strength. That's one reason why I'm 
using a five million axis, particularly for my anterior work. With an anterior conservative prep, what I have to do is get around that over mill with the prime mill at this time, even though the extra fine with the prime mill is excellent, I still wanna get around that over mill. So that's where the five axis is gonna play a larger role for me. As far as Sargoni goes, since the Prime Autocar has come out for the Prime Mill, that is my go-to Zirconia now. And there's reasons for that. Number one, when I move the restoration to the top of the block, we're gonna get optimal aesthetics. In fact, it's getting so close to Enax that I can interchange my Zirconia with Enax. And if I place Neo on that in the anterior zone, I'm getting really good results because I'm mixing both Emax and Zirconia together. I've never been able to do that until just recently. When the restoration is at the top of the block, our aesthetic minimal thickness for that is 800 microns. The other side of the prime Ivyclar zirconia is that if I need that really extra three Y strength, I can move it to the bottom of the block. That's where we're gonna have that three Y. I can go to a thinner minimal thickness of 600 microns. When I'm reaching for zirconia for a case, one thing we have to think about is color selection. And once you get used to that, you know how you're gonna apply it. And one more aspect of prime, when I'm choosing shade with prime, it's usually two shades darker than my intended shade also based on which firing cycle I'm gonna use. One advantage of the CS6 over other furnaces is that with the Prime, we have that down to 15 minutes centering. That's not always the centering cycle I use. There's one for the bridge cycle, which is around a little under 23 minutes. That provides more translucency when we move the restoration to the top of the block. And I really like that aesthetic value. So when time allows, I'm usually using that 23 minute cycle. A smooth digital workflow in our clinical theater where I'm not touching occlusion, it drops down, the proximal contacts are ideal and the margins are great. It's all about setting the case up. So it really is important to take a good compressed PDL bite there's other videos here on YouTube that I talk about that and also on my online membership education. Once we have that PDL byte, we can trust the workflow in our digital systems. The other thing that really supports a smooth software design using that beautiful AI software, particularly biogeneric posteriorly, is making sure I get enough occlusal reduction and good clean margins with a prime scan. It picks those up really well and then recontouring the proximal contacts so I have a really good contact footprint and we have ideal design in our virtual software. The software will do that for you, particularly occlusal reduction. It's just not about minimal thickness, it's about morphology. And then, proximally, with a good footprint, the software is seamless, and as a result, we don't have to spend a lot of time in the software to get exceptional results. The primers that I use for Circonia, so they drop in an occlusion spot on with Prime Mill, and that's the fine mill, would be light aqua on the occlusal table, and set up those contacts so you have good landing contacts and that tooth isn't gonna drift around afterwards. And they should be good as shim stock. And for the proximal contacts using fine mill, it's solid green. It's solid aqua for Emacs, just a little side note there. This parameter criteria, whether it be a single unit or a quadrant, these restorations are just dropping in and it's never been easier in my whole CAD CAM career. With Zirconia and Prime, I have found that I like the fine mill over the super speed mill. The reason why is because it's a smoother finish. It has better anatomy. So once it comes out of that milling unit, this is my finishing technique. Since most of my post restorations are polished, I'm going for pre-luster finishing in the green state. We're going to do that by applying some texture where we need it with diamonds or refining those occlusal grooves as indicated. Then on the JKL3 Meitinger kit, we have a pink and a beige polisher twist. The pink polisher does a nice soft polish on the texturing to neutralize that on the closal table. And you can polish clear down to the margin without gouging that margin and create a really nice smooth surface. But the next step, the beige polisher is what creates that luster. So by applying that beige polisher to the contours that are convex, it will just smooth those out. It comes out of that furnace of where it looks like it's almost ready to go in the mouth. So the final polish is done with the green polisher, particularly on the margins, make those really knife edge and smooth. And then usually the medium polishers, which are the blue, will provide a really nice finish. And that's as far as I go with my zirconia before we drop it in. It's very proficient and it's very predictable. And you will find that in the Cerex system with the Prime Mail, zirconia is probably the easiest, most predictable restoration to drop in to get those three criteria. And that's excellent occlusion, excellent proximal contact and emergence, and margins that are incredible. When I have that, I'm gonna sleep better at night. Thanks for watching this video. I've had a lot of fun. 
this last year. I'm gonna have more fun this next year boutique with a body that's feeling better and having my studio up here where it's set up to go. I'm planning on doing a lot more YouTube videos here on YouTube, also on my educational membership site. I do a lot of videos there and there's users from all over the world on that online site. And I'm also enjoying what I do with my live teaching. My flagship class there is Mastering Anti Aesthetics. This year, I'll be adding more diagnostics with ExoCAD and also aesthetics and comprehensive care. If you have any comments or questions, post them below. I really appreciate you folks that watch these videos. I wish I could get to know you all better, but make comments, that makes a difference. It's been a good year, and next year in a clinical theater, it should be even more promising. So you folks take care, bye now. Thank you.